So in today's adventure, we're going to be looking at temp tables and stored procedures. We're going to be looking at it, uh, we're going to be running this line of code, but we're going to execute it, but we're going to set up the stored procedure four different ways to go over this, because most likely if you're using temp tables, you'll never have to use a drop table or an if exists, because SQL Server takes care of all that. The stored procedure has its own connection, so to speak, so the temp table only exists while the stored procedure is executing. In this case, the, the temp tables inside the stored procedure have nothing to do with the actual specific connection of this query window. However, there are a few things that you should know in case you're using loops and all that kind of fun stuff. So let's open our ACME database, go to programmability, stored procedures, and ah, we have a stored procedure called temp table, drop table, loop example. Nice short name. The first thing that we're going to do, let's make this a little bigger, folks. Um, all we're going to do is we're going to do you know, our begin statement. We're going to select star into, and we have a temp table called multigrain, because uh, we're going to run something multiple times, uh, except not the first time. That's just the name of the table. From customer types, we're selecting from that table. And then we're just going to do a select from the, uh, the temp table, and then we're done. Very simple, very simple. In real life, you wouldn't just do all this to do that because you would just select from this table. It's just an example. And you notice everything else is commented out and we have our end statement. So really, these two lines of code, um, if we were just to take these, you know, as they are, and um, run them from a query window, let's just open up a new query. You know, if I was to do this and I ran it, it would go no problem. If I ran it a second time, it would break because multigrain already exists in the temp database now as far as this query window exists. Once I close this, it blows it away. So what's interesting is when you're running from the command line a stored procedure, you might be wondering, well, if it runs this, if it runs these two lines, can I possibly run this statement two times and then have it break the second time? Well, let's run it one time. Whoops, uh, let me go to the right database. That always helps, not the master database, but Acme, there we go. Now we're gonna run this. Now look, it ran. But now, depending on how SQL Server handles temp tables in a stored procedure, it's either gonna work the second time or it's gonna break, and you see it worked. That's because inside the stored procedure, it handles when this gets created and when it gets destroyed. Even though we're not telling it to specifically drop that table, it does it anyway because the stored procedure is only alive for milliseconds. So this temp table is very temporary. It's persistent until the stored procedure has its way with it and then it's over and done. But now let's change things around. Let, let's do this. Let's comment this out for now and let's undo some of this. And we'll do this in bits and pieces. See now what's different here is we're setting up uh, a counter uh, we're setting up another variable for account, and normally you might set account really to how many rows might be in a temp table or something you're doing something with, something meaningful. But here, of course, we're just going to start the counter at one. We're going to increment the counter so that I don't give you my world famous example of an infinite loop, which is always fun. And we're going to say that the count is going to go to five. So basically, everything between this begin and end is going to go through and iterate five times. Now, a lot of stuff is commented out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a select into this table multivitamin, haha, ha, and then we're going to select for multivitamin. But then I'm going to drop the table each time. So let's first of all save this and then go back here. Now if I run this, basically what we're going to do is see the query results coming back five times. Whoops. What's happening? Why isn't this doing this? Select into, oh, because I didn't make a loop, duh. Let, let me, uh, while counter less than or equal to count. Don't you wish all problems were that easy to fix? Okay, let's change that and let's go back here. And now when we run this, see now we run the stored procedure, da, 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 da and it ran all five times. It didn't break. Now, if we were to do something unsmart, 
like not have this drop statement, see then all of a sudden Junior is going to break. See it it ran it low to the table, but then you know it, it basically it's not going to give us anything back and if there's an error, and it says you know procedure blah blah blah. There's already an object named multivitamin. So you see in this case because we're looping, and the connection of the stored procedure is kind of still in play. See, then it gets really nasty, and it says, no, you already have this table, so you can't do that. So if we open that back up, and then run this, we're good to go, and it's happy. So you see, there are times where you need to use drop table. But what about if exists? Well, if exists, let's say, for example, I didn't put the drop table here. Let's say I wanted to put the drop table up here instead. Well, that kind of works, except it's not going to work the first time. It's not going to work the first time because there's no table to drop. You know, it, it would have worked if we had the table created already, but let's, let's just do this and see what happens. Oops, did I save that? All right, let's try that now. See, it doesn't want to, it doesn't like dropping a table because the table's not there. So you can see how depending on what you're doing things can be slightly different but things get murky now here's a situation where you can put drop table in front of it that's if you know that you already created the table up here you might not do this but you could you could have a really weird logic tree but now I'm gonna create the table up here one time for sure but then when I come in through the loop I know that the table was already created so I have to drop it so I have to drop it before I create it so this way as long as I'm dropping it before or after, if it already existed. In this case, already exists, in the loop, gotta drop it, then create it. No sense dropping it again because it's gonna, you know, it can only drop it once. So let's do this. Shouldn't get an error. Whoops, wait a minute, it didn't like something. Let's go back, save this. Okay, where did we make our mistake? Where did we go wrong? Uh, we created the table, then we're dropping it, dropping it, dropping it. Um, oh, you know why? Because <laughs> I'm using different table names, multigrain and multivitamin, so I'm trying to do two different things. Let me change this da, 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 to this name. Okay, now that we're all on the same page. Da, da, da. You might want to watch this video a couple of times. Okay, we're doing something that Junior doesn't like here. Let's get rid of this. Da, 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 da. We decided we don't like that many multivitamins. What you can do in a situation like this, let's say that we'd, um, we don't want to use this drop table, and we're just going to do it at the beginning because we feel like it. Um, and it could be because we had something going on up here. You know, if you use if exists, oh, multivitamin. Basically, this if exists, the if exists may look funny. Uh, if exists is different than true or false you know, or is it greater than zero or not, which is kind of like true or false. Um, this is just saying, if exists means, is this query going to return a row or not a row, or more than one row? It's either no rows or any rows. So if I select one, it doesn't matter what I'm selecting, I'm just looking in the temp database and sys objects to see if there's actually a user table named multivitamin that starts with that. And if there is, then it'll drop it. If there isn't, then it doesn't care. So basically, if we, ch if we do this, then we should be in good shape. We can do this all day long for the rest of our lives. So basically, in this loop, if we didn't use this, we could just put drop table here every time before the, before the loop kicks around. The only reason you would ever do this up here is if you weren't sure if the table might exist already, like maybe somebody created it up here. So then that's why you do the if exists before that. Um, if exists and then drop table beforehand, it won't break anything if the table didn't exist. But you're not assuming that it's there or not. So that some people are a little more comfortable doing it that way. The only problem that you might run into if you put drop table at the end of this and just have it like that is just for some bizarre coincidence, if the table already existed up here, and hint, when you're doing stuff with different tables, just name them differently, but if, if this table multivitamin already existed up here, then you would have to do a drop right before it. 
But if you didn't know if it, if it like might exist or it might not because there's like I mentioned the strange logic tree, then you're better off here doing an if exists and then a drop table. It doesn't really cost you anything time wise. It's very minor. So that's that's really kind of soup to nuts when and where and why you would need a drop table and or an if exists. You'll need drop table more often than if exists, but if exists is only if before the loop there's some really funny logic going on and it could wind up either way where there might be a table, there might not, like it's, you know, philosophical. <laughs> and that's that's why in a stored procedure with temp tables, when you might need drop table and if exists. 